In this video, we're going to give a careful proof. A subset Y of a metric space is closed if and only if the complement of Y is open. So first, let me just refresh your memory on a few definitions that we're going to need. So recall, a point X and capital X, which is a metric space, is adherent to Y if for all R greater than zero, the open ball centered at X of radius R intersected with Y is non-empty. Also, the set Y with a bar is called the closure of Y and this is the, gonna be the set of all points that are adherent to Y, and it's called the closure of Y. And we say that Y is closed. This means that the closure of Y is equal to Y. All right, so now we are going to do this proof, so proof. I give my pencil a little sharp in here before we start. And let's go ahead and prove this direction first. So we'll start by assuming that Y is closed and then we have to show that the complement is open. So suppose Y is closed. It's a closed subset of a metric space. And we want to show that the complement is open. So first, what does it mean for Y to be closed? So this means that the closure is equal to Y. So the claim now is that the complement is open. So the complement is X set minus Y. So claim that this set is open. So to show this is open, we have to show that every point is an interior point. So we'll start by taking an element in this set. So take any x in this set. That's supposed to be a slanted thing. So that means that x is not in y, which is equal to y bar. So that means that x is not adherent to y, right? Because it's not in the closure and the closure is the set of all of the points that are adherent to Y. So if X is not in that set, X is not adherent to Y. So basically it means it's not adherent to Y, so we negate this definition. So that means that there exists some R greater than zero, right? The negation of this statement here, such that the ball centered at X of radius R intersected with Y is equal to the empty set. Okay, that's what that means there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to show that this ball is contained in this set here. And it's pretty easy to do it. So note, for all Y in BXR, okay, we have that Y is not in Y. because if it was, then the intersection is not empty, right? So th these sets can't have anything in common. So if I take any Y in this set, for every single Y in this set, Y is not gonna be in Y, because if it is, then this is gonna be not empty. So that means Y is in X set minus Y. So basically this is contained in this, because every element in this set is also in this set. So this is contained in this set here. Perfect. So we took an element in this set. We showed that there exists an R greater than zero, such that the open ball centered at X, which is that element, of radius R is contained entirely in this set. So this shows X is an interior point of x set minus y. 
since this holds for all x, this is open. So since this holds for all x in the set, we have that x set minus y is open in x. Let's say open. All right, now let's prove the other direction. So for the other direction, um, we have to suppose that the complement of y is open, and then we have to show y is closed. So let's go through that carefully. So suppose that this set here is open, and we have to show that y is closed. So the claim is that y bar is equal to y. So note, y is contained in its closure. That's always true, as every set is contained in its closure. Very easy to show, almost immediate. Okay, so we're going to leave that out. So now we're just going to show the other direction. We're going to show that every element in the closure is also in Y. So take any X in the closure. So if X is in Y, we are done. All right, the proof is over, right? Because we've shown that um, the closure is contained in y, therefore by double inclusion, they're equal, therefore y is closed. If x is not in y, let's think about what that means. Well, that means that x is in x set minus y, which is open by hypothesis. So that means there exists a positive number r greater than zero such that the open ball centered at x of radius r is contained entirely in this set. So what does that mean? So this means, this means for all y in this set here, bxr, we have y in x set minus y. So y is not in y. Okay? So every element in this set is not in this set. So there are no elements in this set that are in this set. Therefore, these sets have nothing in common. So the intersection, bxr intersected with y, is empty. So we showed there exists an r greater than zero, such that this intersection is empty. So what does that mean? So x is not adherent to y. So that means that x is not in this set, a contradiction because we assumed it was. Thus, x must be in y, and so the set is contained in y. Therefore, we have both inclusions. We have that the closure is equal to y, and so y is closed. And that completes the proof. So, a lot going on here. Uh, hopefully uh, this has, has made some sense here. So basically, again, just to recap this part because it's a little bit tricky, um, maybe. So suppose it's open. This is our claim. We already have uh, one inclusion here. That's always true. So we have to show that this set here is contained in here. So we have to show basically that y bar is contained in y. That's our goal. So we took, we took an element here and if x is in y, we're done. If it's not in y, then it's in this set here, which is open. Therefore, there's some open ball centered 
at x of radius r contained in it because it's an interior point. But what does that mean? So if this set is entirely contained in here, that means that um, there are no elements of the set that are in y. And I just clarified, clarified it here by saying for all y in this set, y is in this set. So for all y in this set, y is not in y, capital Y. Therefore, this intersection must be empty. If it wasn't empty, then they'd have an element in common, and then this would be a false statement. So it's empty. So we have that there exists a positive number such that this intersection is empty. That's exactly what it means for x to not be adherent to y. Recall up here, um, a point x and x is adherent to y for all r greater than zero. This intersection is not empty. So if you can find some r such that it's empty, therefore it's not adherent. That's what we did here. If it's not adherent to y, that means it's not in the closure of y. But we assumed it was in the closure uh, of y right here. So that is a contradiction. So therefore, x must be in y. And so we have this inclusion. And therefore, by double inclusion, they are equal. And so y is closed. I hope this video has been helpful to someone who is learning this stuff. It's really fun. Good luck.